awful lot of traffic, an awful lot of people still trying to get into the stadium and in actual fact to the stadium. We will be starting on time, as near to time as possible, but be patient with us, I hope you will. We'll continue playing a couple of records until everybody can possibly get into the stadium who has paid to get here, who wants to come and see Evil Knievel. So just a couple of minutes, no longer, I promise you. Thank you all. Bye. Gifford in this famed old stadium has seen many a uh, happening over the course of his history. This is not a World Cup match today. It's not a Ruggers match, but it is some of the highlight of the circus acts that you see throughout the world. And just like all Europeans, the people here in London love their circus acts. And today they're going to see some incredible daredevil stunts. So let's pick up the action. <laughs>
at the bottom of the exit ramp. Two times as many people in this stadium as you have in the entire hometown of Butte, Montana. Well, it's a wonderful feeling. I think maybe I'd rather be home. You know, Eva, one has to wonder, after the Snake River, uh, you never said you would retire. You never said that was it or anything else, but one has to wonder why you continue. Well, I uh, sometimes think that maybe I should quit, but you always want to keep going, and uh, I'm kind of proud of that red, white, and blue number one I wear on my shoulder, and I want to keep it on there. I'm glad you're here today. You know, I've never had an accident when you're around, and uh, you won't have one today. You came to London, I'll tell you that. Uh, one other thing, the layoff, though, you haven't, uh, you haven't jumped in over a year. Yeah, well, I may not be as good... Uh, as I always was, but you're going to find out today I'm as good once as I always was. This is long and hot. I'll make it. Good luck. Thank you, Frank. There is John Hood, who is the Chief this opportunity, if I may, to thank the Hemdale group that brought me here to England. I can honestly say that coming from the United States and never being abroad, I wondered what the people of this country would be like, but everyone that I have met here has been most friendly and sincere and has made this trip I hope for me what you English people make it for every visitor that comes to this country. It's been wonderful being here, believe me. I wondered about coming here because this country is where history started. This country has seen everything. Auto Dare Devils, motorcycle daredevils, all of the wire acts, all of the trapeze people. And I asked the Hemdale people if I could not, when I came to Wembley in London, perform with the finest performers that the United Kingdom and Europe had to offer. How about one more time, a great round of applause for the people who put a show on here for you today. never have been nor never will be a politician. However, I want to tell all of you that the United States of America has always been proud of having the support of the United Kingdom. And I could not help but see the signs on some of your automobiles here and in your store windows that say, keep Britain in Europe. And believe me, we need your great nation in Europe because the free world will stop being free when Europe is not free. I came here today to make this jump. Before I do, I would like to ask a favor of you. You would give the same courtesy to a race car driver or to a man who wanted to run a horse. I would like to get warmed up a little bit before I make the jump. And to get warmed up, I like to ride my motorcycle on the rear wheel. Would you like to see some wheelies? I'd like to do some wheelies for you. Okay. The plywood track around the outside here is what Eva will be doing the wheel is on. He's got, uh, he can do these wheelies incidentally and I've seen him do it at uh, 100 miles an hour for almost a mile. We haven't quite got that length here but they give you a fair crack at them I know.
flag up short at the end there for the length of the ramp across the, the front of the buses. And we'll now go back up the other side. And some of the guests that we have with us here today in the Royal Box, some of the finest personalities in the sport and in the show business. And uh, as he comes up to collect the microphone from the top of the ramp, I'd like to introduce them to you. We have, for example, here... Today, we have Graham Hill in the Royal Box. I know that he would just like to pay a special tribute to him. Graham, I'd like to thank you for coming today and let you know, and all of the people in the United Kingdom know that even in the United States, we consider you the greatest living race car driver that ever lived. You're a credit to your country. He even won our Indianapolis. He even won our Indianapolis. We also have with us today John Surtees. Who's on there? I have a big hand for John Surtees. John Surtees. Seven times world champion, motorcycle raider. And also World Automobile Driving Champion. John, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. And someone I know you'll be pleased to see, sitting right up there in the center of the bottom there, Henry Cooper. Henry. Henry, thank you for coming. I kind of have a feeling that you were the, the last of the great white hopes. Thank you so much for coming. We also have a great supporter of the 
motor racing industry, Lord Heskin, up there in the Royal Box. Lord Heskin. Thank you for coming, Lord Heskin. Here's a gentleman who is putting the flag of Britain back on race cars and doing one of the best jobs that's ever been done in the history of racing. Not only for himself, but for his drivers and for your country. And believe me, I've seen him in action. He's a man you can be very proud of. Big thank you to Keith Moon of The Who. He's up there. Hey! There you go, Keith. Emerson, Lake and Palmer are with us too, I think. And Ben Mears of Chelsea, who's up there. Blackburn is with it. Many thanks to all of you for coming with us this afternoon. Back to you, Evil. Thank you, David. Thank you, fans. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. There have been a lot of questions asked of me about the canyon jump I brought on the boat across the Atlantic from the state of Idaho in the United States of America the actual sky cycle that I used to jump that canyon with. And I would like to say a few words to you about it. I waited for six years to jump that canyon. It was a disappointment to me that I had to go down in defeat. When they put me in it, I thought my chances were 90% that I could make it. If the parachute had not malfunctioned and blew out, I would have made it. I wanted to get across to the other side. I did not want to go on the river. I was tied in. If I hadn't hit on the rocks, I would have drowned. One of your interviewers here in this country asked me if maybe the canyon jump damaged my credibility because I did not make it. I asked that reporter if she wanted to see me die. She said no. I told her that we burnt three of our finest astronauts to death on the launch pad at Cape Kennedy, that it did not damage their credibility, that it's not whether you win or lose where I come from, it's how much heart you put into it, and the most important thing, that you keep your word and get in and try. Thank you. One final word before I jump. I was not going to do this, but I see a lot of young boys and girls here today and a lot of young mothers and fathers my own age and their mothers and fathers. I have to say something to you that I feel I should, especially in your country, like my country, about narcotics. Narcotics is a thing that has done a good, a good job of trying to destroy our nation. I'm not telling you to take them. I'm not telling you not to take them. But I can give you an example of what will happen to you if you take narcotics. When Graham Hill and John Surtees go to a racetrack to race their machines, they put gasoline in those vehicles and they race them as they should be ridden. If they put nitro in them, they run for a few laps, and then they blow all the hell. And that's what will happen to you if you use narcotics. You'll run for a few years, and then you too will blow all to hell. So the decision is yours. You make it. I've never jumped 13 buses. I have never jumped this high before in my life with the exception of the Snake River Canyon. Then I was not on my Harley Davidson motorcycle. I have many sponsors in the United States, people that I'm proud to be associated with. And Harley Davidson and the candy chuckles that you don't have here are two of them that I'm very proud of. You people here today have been a wonderful, wonderful crowd. 
I'm glad that you all made it. And now I'm going to do my best to make it. Right across these 13 London buses, I'm going to land right on this X. You hang on to your seats, I'll hang on to the handlebars, and we'll get this over with. absolute dead central location of the ramp with moving about and as he likes to check the eye all the way along to make sure that the ramp is lined up exactly dead centrally and he'll make his way over to the very top of the slide ski jump there which is right at the very top underneath the roof over on the west end it's a 380 foot ramp that and uh, it's only four foot wide. satisfied with the condition of the bicycle, prepare himself to go up to the ramp and jump. dead central, but the takeoff point is absolutely clear.
motorcycles and uh, none of us are quite sure here what's happening at this particular moment in time because he didn't like the gearing on that particular one as he came down the ramp and tested it and he decided to change it so uh, he's now happy with the one he's got so uh, up he goes
fact that this is probably the most dangerous jump ever attempted. And if you have any doubts about its danger, I can only promise you to go and stand up at the top of that tower and look down across the full length of this ramp and realize that this is a world record attempt in height ramp and that every single possibility is being made and every precaution is being taken to make sure that he has the right feeling and the right speed and the right speed. backs off the ramp. If he follows his ordinary pattern, he will go back to the top, and indeed the jump will be coming. Evil Knievel out of Butte, Montana, 37 years old. Practically every bone in his body has been broken at one time or another over the course of his daredevil years. An amazing man, he has taken London quite by storm. I spent a couple of hours with him prior to the jump, and like any other athlete before any other contest, obviously he was nervous. But just before he came out, made his appearance, did his thing, if you will, with the wheelies back and forth, turning on the crowd, he almost dozed off in a boot. He leaned out the window and looked at a crowd of 80,000 people. He said, what does a man have to do to get this many people together? And I looked at him and I said, Evil, you're doing it. He will be going about 90 miles an hour when he leaves the ramp. He estimates he'll cover 140 feet, 10 feet either direction, and it could be all over. Look at him. Made his first jump when he was 15, countless other jumps after that in 1966. Heard himself in Indio, 1967 season, Palace, here he goes, and he will go. Oh my God. take him to the London Clinic. If he's very badly hurt, they go to the London Hospital in Whitechapel. Come and if it's Jeffrey much worse Jeffrey. than that, then to the Northwick Hospital in Harrow. He's unconscious. The doctor and four 
from the, the private ambulance crew are bringing him onto the stretcher. Appears to be semi-conscious. His left arm is being held. He's completely unconscious. No, he's Move lifted back. his head. He raised his head. He's come around. He's okay. He's all right. because I will never, ever, ever jump again. I am through. He 
has just said that he's going to walk out of the stadium. look again now from the same angle in slow motion and here's the point where Evil Knievel's got to make up speed and be the only man in the place who really wants to miss that last bus and he comes out of the saddle as he's about to make his takeoff perhaps not fast enough and catches this little tiny bridge between the last bus and the landing ramp and that's what causes the trouble and there he gets that trampoline effect desperately hanging on to the bike somersaults over rather painfully obviously and this attraction this magnetic attraction between man and machine he's going away and the bike is following him and he's trapped by it and there's obviously this is what's caused the injuries and his legs trapped underneath the bike and now the first time this head-on in normal speed dramatic shot of the trampoline in effect Let's look at this 
dramatic shot head on in slow motion and see exactly now what causes the problem he doesn't quite make the landing ramp with his back wheel and you see this springboard effect that he gets with that gap and there it is gripping those handlebars trying hard to get away from the bike and there you see him tumbling away but the bike almost crawling after him and crushing into him and it really does take a man with a special brand of courage to come back after this do to get this many people together and I looked at him and I said evil you're doing it he will be going about 90 miles an hour when he leaves the ramp he estimates he'll cover 140 feet 10 feet either direction and it could be all over Made his first jump when he was 15. Countless other jumps after that. In 1966, hurt himself in Indio. 1967, Caesar's Palace. Here he goes, and he will go. He's down, and he is hurt. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen of this wonderful country, I've got to tell you that you are the last people in the world who will ever see me jump because I will never, ever, ever jump again. I am through. <laughs>